They've got height, they've got Kurt Serato, Yuri and Safe ready to take them on here on Mirage as we head into the final map for the first quarter final. Furia versus G2 underway. Nico peeking out towards mid early. Arf toss on top of the pressure onto him and Nico has to fade away. And it's going to be a B play thing for their coming in. Alexi has to do a lot here. He's under a lot of pressure. Alexi B is going to be tested and taken out. Draw constructing and given the advantage over the Furia in the first round of Mirage. They continue to stay ahead even after that one pick from Monacy back. It isn't enough here as Nico swoops on in. The bomb's not down. It's safe out of there and the bomb isn't down. It hasn't been committed to. He's going to try and catch him as he crosses back over. But this puts more pressure on Furia because they have to consider now getting the bomb down. No nades in play anymore as well. Just the aim fights. Well, Yuri has been finally committed to that bomb plant. Hunter's coming in for short. Spots out Yuri in the middle of the site, but Hunter's the player that takes the most damage. No one down in that engagement. Jerry's trying to get back out through the market window. Diving down into the site. Art with another kill this time on the Hunter, and it's cleaned up. Furia will take the pistol. Five out of five, Dinko, so far for the series for Furia. And not just that, they converted every single time. G2 is going to be hating that fact, but I'm surprised Hunter didn't go for the peak. Maybe they didn't know the bomb was being planted for short. He didn't maybe get the sound cue from his teammates. He could have peaked that, maybe got another kill on the bomb planter, but Furia wins the all-important pistol round and a double scout from G2 in the second round. Actually, not a lot of utility on Furia. They all have the wheels and AKs, and Nico gets shut down early with that Deagle in connector. Well, Yuri, up through short already. Good control being taken. Nice to be. He's got the scout in hand too. He's coming through the group stages. Monacy with the other, but not going so well up until this point. Monacy finally able to take himself a pick on towards Yuri. Are slipping around the backside. A little bit of Alexi B poking out. He's been too much, doing too many squats at the gym. And around the corner, he's been spotted. Art unable to take him out. Eventually, they will drop him. In just a matter of time before two get added to the tally here for Furia. And it's something that they have been fantastic at, hasn't it been? It's just like the first three rounds of play, they just seem to have no problems, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Save gets the jump here on Monacy as well. Only Jax left towards the ramp. Perhaps he will try to get a gun or just save the deagle and armor for the following round really and yeah Nico with a little bit of a cheap death there early on right I don't think he expected them to just swing so aggressively on mid and you no know, funnily enough Mirage is one of the maps where he's actually struggled individually and you know the, the reasoning for that being on the T side as well a bit rough to do you know everyone expects him in A apps right like, even that lurk position is hard for a lot of those players to execute properly now you just know it's coming so it's a bit of a struggle to find it, but you know, opposite to Vertigo, where he should probably move on the Lurk on the T side, on Mirage, maybe they should just put him in the group, right? So this whole, that he has more opportunities to fight, to win some duels. But we'll see, G2 has not played Mirage at this tournament. Fury has played it actually three times. Beat Cloud9 on it. G2 only played it at the Major, where they had mixed results, two and two. Close loss to Navi as well, 1917. So Furia with more recent success on playtime. Nico on top of triple. Catches drop with the weakest pistol in play. It's a good thing to find for Nico. Not really expecting too much more for G2 here, so how about Furia just limiting the casualties here? Not these rounds can get off with Inko with these small side. Nico's in, that's gonna find Monas surely. Takes him out, no problem. Art right, there you go. The another one from Nico from the still with that eagle. Mm, might be able to get something done, but Jax is caught towards the bin. And Yuri putting pressure on Nico. Can't really go. Control for control. All these kills are found over the top of the ticket in the midst of the smokes. As you would expect, G2 being brought down in this round. A couple of players found, yes, from Nico, but there will be three now for Furia. And actually, you know, I feel like Mirage is one of the worst maps to lose a pistol round to Furia when they're on the T side because it's a much more open map, right? There's a lot more running around on mid, jumping down for the top mid smoke, getting close to connector fast, or putting pressure on B. Those are all things art loves to do. 
So you can't play for everything, right? If you're CT, you need to pick your fights, you need to pick where do you want to be strong, where you want your focus to be, is it mid, is it the sides of the map, the bomb sites, right? So it can be really dangerous here. Jito was doing a great job of, after these initial three rounds, actually winning the first gun round and getting some momentum back. We'll see if they can keep that up. Nico with a quick underpass jump. Yeah, looking to get into the mix early is Nico. Arts already up for short. Applying pressure through the ladder room, but it's Nico that's found the first kill, and Hunter swinging out. That's two benches, falling team mid as Nico gets caught. 4v3 still good for G2. A lot of time left here for Furia. I don't know what happened there, but Art and Hunter missed each other. That could have been a double entry for Furia. Fortunately for G2, it hasn't gone that way. Drops over towards the B apartments. Inside of the site itself is the Lexi B. Drop getting closer and closer. Lexi out for Drop, just snaps his head off. And we're right back into the equilibrium. 3v3. Monacy. Oh, the timing. Just misses out on the connector play. Monacy dives down, and you can see Art was immediately fixated upon his position with a sound trip, and Monacy goes in for the fight, misses it, but still stands. Art unable to finish his food, instead Bombs calls Caster out to come back through the underpass, and the bomb is coming back. Luckily, they have found that kill and crit at the opening. G2 gonna put some plays towards CT spawn. This is going to be rough. There is a smoke, but no kit. Timing is not there. Serato with a great position in Connector Bomb is planted for him as well with drop in apps on low HP. They have to bait out some peaks from Furia with the smoke from Hunter. What? Tap from Hunter. Serato's wow. head was not shielded from CT. No one watching for it. Smoke now goes onto the bomb, and this round becomes significantly less. Box drop lines them up, and in one foul swoop, takes the round win. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of lapse in communication there, you know, no one is holding for Xerado, he just gets killed in the back, but not really expecting drop with that plan to come from apps. Closes it out and go back to the vertigo first gun round where G2 pulls back a 3v4, well now they lose a 4v3. In a much more worse situation for them, for that to happen. Down 4-0 to Furia. Yeah, 4-0 start for Furia here. And G2 have got to do everything they can to try and get into this early. We heard Maui towards the end of that death segment saying he favors Fury coming in this because of the momentum now being on their side, heading into a map they're comfortable on. If G2 don't stifle that early, it's going to be systematic here for Fury, and that's exactly what Art has done. Two kills already added to the tally. One from Nico's D, but Alexi B can't do much better than just Nico left alone. And this is where you know, Fury is much more more dangerous playing from ahead, right? Like they can play with more confidence, they can go for even crazier moves. They got a good econ a decent economy now as well. And for G2, you you again it's just about staying patient, right? Like 5-0 sucks being down a CT, but you know you need to just treat every round as its own. Try to swing it back. You know, you can't play for everything. Again, pick your pick your fights, pick your battles. Don't let Furia draw you into their chaos, right? Like, don't let them drag you to that level because that's what they're the masters of, really. Seems like we have a little bit of a tech issue. We're going to try and get that one resolved as quickly as possible and get back into the action. But Furia impressed me mentally with how they performed coming back into that Vertigo matchup. You know, there's so many mentally shattering rounds within that first half that just didn't really go their way. And we touched on every situation that was close. We go G2's way. Here for Furia, a very good start. And the gun rounds collected too. Yeah, a lot of close rounds, clutches as well. They didn't go their way. Individuals weren't really performing. All that changed now. It really has. Let's and you know what, what did they do in the first gun round really just sort of a mid control with the triple with the, with the triple smoke smoke for shorts as well fast trades happen so you, you know it's just default play for for now so if you're g2 in this round you don't really have like a call over let's do this to counter them it's still too early in the half you just have to sort of play default players need to be on point individually and the main guys for g2 on this map on the ct side are jackson alexi in this case, because they're the anchors, right? You, could, you saw what happened to the round when Alexi died on B in the, in the 4v3 situation, right? It opens up the map so much. At that time, it was dropped. A lot of times, it's art, just trying to find a weird timing where we can catch someone off guard. So as an anchor, you really have to be 
discipline, you have to be in the zone, you have to be focused, right? Either to have a good off angle so that you can punish that pick for him or an information play where you can stay alive, right? Relay that to your team, keep piecing the puzzle together and coming up with an answer. Well, Lexi B and Jax both have fantastic performances, in particular in that CT-sided start. So, we'll have to see a little step up from them coming into this, yet to get a kill, both of them, zero on the board. Yeah, it's, it's not been a, a great start for G2, and you know, it's always tough, like, for, it's easy for us with X-Ray, you know, to see what's been going on and how Vertigo went and why they couldn't win rounds on the T side. I didn't really feel like they were making that many mistakes, or obviously they should have won the 5v3, the 5v3 on B, right? But when you're playing, you don't have, obviously, all the information, and maybe their feeling is different, you know? Maybe they're really deflated after that because they felt they, you know, played terribly or, so, you know, players were messing up stuff individually or maybe some of the calling wasn't great. So you would hate to see that from G2. I think it's just, you know, FURIA played better. I think we just have a headset issue right now on the FURIA side of things, so we're getting that resolved as quickly as possible and returning us to the action. For G2, you just want to get up and at him, right? You did this pause is going to be painful, just waiting there, looking at your uh, big donut you've got on the scoreboard. Just waiting to get back in and try and compete again. For FURIA, a couple of massive moments, a couple of missed highlights, really. In Vertigo, from the likes of Cercerado and Yuri, the Dash were calling for a step up from Cercerado a little bit earlier on today. Let's see if he can continue coming into Mirage. And if you're actually on this map, they also have some next level stuff, right? And you, you, they like to pull yeah. that off, and the game is really close. You know, I remember it was actually against G2 uh, last year when they were playing. I believe it was Blast, something along those lines, and. You know, they do the A-smokes execute, sort of, like they show the bomb and, you know, you're rotating over as a 14, 14, 15, 14, then they run all the way back with 22 seconds left, right? <laughs> Just make yeah. it as close as humanly possible. And you don't really expect that from Fury at that level of depth in their playbook, but they do have it. And when they really need it, that's something they can fall back on. But there's no reason to do it when you're winning, right? When you're ahead, when you're just doing default, you just keep playing that, play the situations. You know, the reason for, for playing default is that you can see what your opponents are doing. You don't want to just go for a blind call, you know, to do an execute when your opponents might be set up exactly for that. When you're playing default slow, you have players all over the map, you're getting more information, you're starting to piece things together as we're about to get back into the game. The action will resume. We've got the tech issues sorted. We're going to return to round six. G2 is still searching for that first round in this final map of the quarterfinal. Nico, the play around the window smokes. Not the same kind of gaps we've seen before from G2, but I'm going to get a little bit messy with it. He has taken out Yuri. Peek out from Monacy for triple. Successful. And drop no longer. Nico has to fight through the window, and Art just shreds through him. So close to going down there. That could have been the 5v2 situation. Art barely alive on 8 HP. G2 has the information, though, right? No, the two players were there. One more towards A. There's a gap there. Honestly, missing that shot. Not an easy shot to hit, especially when you're single scoped. Inferior regrouping on mid. Yeah, at this point, one minute left. Getting the boost up to see if they can spot through the window. No one from G2 hanging around here. No one giving them a chance. So you get a player up into the window itself. Maybe this can become a power position for Kesarado. If he can make something happen of this, he catches the timing on Hunter. Maybe he can bring him down, and Hunter stands tall for G2. It's also important that Alexi, in the meanwhile, to control the B-apps, right? That's, a, that's what allowed Hunter to sort of swing back and not have to worry too much about supporting him. It's a strong position, even if they come up short, you have the off angle, you're probably gonna get a kill, survive. Sphere is trying to get into the A bomb site. Seconds. Flash set up for safety, fights down CT and Monacy. He's been pulled out of the play. Again, there is a Palace player of Jax right now, but that And bomb, they know about him, he uses his weapon. Yeah, and that bomb won't be denied. So Fury at least get that down in a two versus three. Alexi B is quickly coming in from short side. Art is in a tough spot here, he's completely trapped. He has to fight, and Alexi B beats him out in the battle. And he's now safe, caught in an awkward position with the AWP. Brought down by Hunter, and finally G2 will find their first round here in Mirage. Yeah, that was a, a, a cool 
little early move that Furia did, you know, they smoked the ramp Molotov, which is what you do usually when you want to go for an A rush. So that basically forces the connector player to kind of turn towards A, and they had Arten and one more player sneaking down mid. They want to go into connector first, then they ended up boosting, they get the kill on Nico, but, you know, the anchors were strong, right? Jax uh, towards A, Alexi with a good, uh, good aggressive push on B. G2 needs more of that, and need, need to string some more rounds together. Economy is still good for Furia. Nico lining up the molly for the back top mid boxes. Just preventing some early control and early comfortability. Safe holding for an aggressive play through the apartments. G2 not giving them any of these early fights. The most proactive player right now is Jax in terms of his advanced setup. He's pushed up on top of the wood. But right now, G2 giving some space over to Fury to play with. Yeah, Fury are just holding for some information plays, potentially just wanting to punish G2, waiting for them to get a little bit impatient. Sort of a delayed default. You can see the smoke coming in from spawn now for window, and the two players are going to advance. Underpass and basically it's late mid control, right? You, you wait out that first utility from the CTs. And you can see the movement of G2 now taking the ramp control as well back. Nico is trying to fight out through connector. It's one drop quick to trade it back. Fantastic stuff from Fury to keep the numbers even and take away a powerful player in a strong position. G2 still with that ramp control. Have to deal with Fury likely coming up the connector and putting pressure on A from this avenue. They've called that so off. moving towards B. Hunter gets the, the lurker here on Yuri, and now he's just speeding up, and it's going to be a lot. Alexi is alone. He has a lot of work to do here, Dinko. Hunter's trying to get back in time to help him, but Alexi B has to focus on short. He's decided that's the one position he will fix it upon. Drop has been taken out. Utility's coming in now as the reinforcement to right for G2, and Alexi B, he's just holding alone. Finally taken out with the time. It's not there and no way the safe gets away. Fantastic stuff from G2. Two in a row. And out of the tactical timeout. It's just been a it's been a reset for G2. They're in the game now. That's exactly what the doctor ordered, right? Another round, and this time Fury doesn't even get the bomb down. Their economy is a bit weird. Two of the guys can go for the AKs, the rest can go for pistols. They do decide to go for the force here as well. Don't want to give any free rounds to G2, want to keep the pressure. And usually in these rounds, Fura goes towards B, a sort of an expo play, if they go for a, a, a sort of a mixed buy. So again, Alexi B. Alexi B under pressure. This time will crack under it. Art creates space now and allows Furia to start flooding their way through to the site. Hunter looks to be the dam though. And he's taking himself the first kill. Can't quite amount to the second. Monacy gets caught looking the wrong way. Art hops up on top. And Fury up just shredding through the G2 defense in this round. Jack still yet to get on the board. Maybe this could be his first kill as he goes back for a double dip. He's going towards the ladder room. Safe hunting him, finding him as well. Jack's out of there. G2 can't stop the Fury rush. And the B site falls. Again, it's a lot of it is up to the anchor, right? Like you just have to, when Alexi dies so quickly, not even buying time, there's really not much that the rest of the team can do. If Hunter would have gotten an extra kill, that could have maybe helped them. Honestly, he gets time, he was holding for it. As he starts to push, so wants to get out of doors, gets peeked from, from Van, and a big, big round for Furia to win. You see the buy is not great for G2. It really is it, but it's still enough. The biggest weapon in their hands is that of Monacy. Underpass being taken by Furia. Nico in the connector position, just with the Deke. Furia just a slow default round again. Trying to figure out if G2 bought, what their buy is looking like, you know, they know the money is not great for G2, but they're not sure if someone could have an op or not, what's going on, so they're trying to go by the book, basically take control, and you can see this is a good reaction from G2, they're, you know, this round they, they cannot really fight for mid, so they're trying to clear the extremities of the map, put themselves in a better position to fight this split. Little gap to play with on that. Right side of connector smoke, that's by creation. But Fury again, they're, they're grouping towards B. Another B split seems to be in the works, but Monacy is now there to drop. This is a strong position for him. Uh, Monacy's got a big pick there. He could go out again this time. 
taken out. Safe trades it. Keeps it at the 4v4 at the 30 second mark now. Alexi B could be the nuisance. He really has to step up here and deliver at least one. He wants to delay, but gets caught by Yuri. Brought down, Yuri just continues to remove G2 players. And Hunter has to fade away with the M4 on his back. Saving that into the next round is a must. I don't even want to say that repick from Honesty is inexperienced. I think that's more being down 6-2, right? And knowing that your teammates don't have the best guns. Even if you're going to repick, maybe do it from a different angle, not from the exact yeah. same angle. Like that's, a, that's the easiest refrag of Safe's life. And at that point, the round, again, pretty much done and dusted Alexi with an MP9. Can't take the long range fight, so he has to try to find a short range fight for him, which was incredibly difficult from that position. And Fury in full control of this game so far. And you can see, right, that the G2, they can't really fight for mid in that round. They have a good reaction, they push for information, but Fury is just a little bit faster than their rotations can be. That one re-peak and yeah, I that's mean, it, they have the side. In that round, as you mentioned, the fact the score lines in this position, you don't have all the best weapons, you almost feel like it's on you to make the plays happen, to make the round go your way. And we now look at G2 having to call a timeout. As you look down the barrel of what they've got, it's not going to be a pretty buy coming out of this round. Yeah, it's not. It's going to be an eco, basically, with, with two saved guns. So it's hard to, to find some of these openings, right? Basically, you, you can try to make a flash play from Nico where he goes down the goes out the connector smoke and tries to find something. But hitting a good timing on on that sort of a play is really difficult. Players can be behind the box, they can, you know, be pushing through the top mid smoke at that time, and you have high-low situation that you need to worry about. But you have to start doing something at this point, you know. They need rounds, so they need to try to play with these two guns to find an opening, try to win this round. They need something to bring them back into this game, Dinko. Furia in full control. G2 need to force it out of their hands. Hunter aggressive into the apartments. Yuri shreds him. One of the safe rifles out already, and Yuri oh, just catches Alexi B blissfully unaware. And now Monacy, it's one for him. Nico follows up. And there is a bit of disruption here from G2, but it's not really enough to consider them having a shot here. We need another pretty quickly to get G2 into this one. And AK has fallen into the hands of Nico, though. Yeah, he's kept that since the last round. And I like that play from Hunter, it's just, you know, he just doesn't get the kill. Could have been a different round otherwise. It seems they are trying to find their way in. Oh, Jax's dig. Cracks open, dropping. Cracks open the round here for G2 as they're trying to move through swiftly. No kid. The time is ticking, and that, yeah, that, that's a big problem here. Nico is going to get shredded anyway cool. and just get smacked up the head. So eight rounds for Furia. Uh, we'll take a look at now G2's buy. It's uh, looking much better. Now it is, but you know the score isn't looking. It isn't looking that pretty. great. It's pretty dire, and it's hard to you know now. For example, Furia. I think it's easy to expect that G2 might go for a fight mid, like they might focus more on mid because giving mid and fighting for the sides hasn't really been working out for them. So it might be a good time for Furia to just do an explosive play, like fake mid default. Art already out mid. They'll have to speed up. Oh, it's just so quick. Yuri to remove Nico. Nico has really been struggling to find consistent impact from the connector. Some of these mid fights just not working for him at all. Honestly, holding. Yuri's gone down a few times to that. Honestly, ready for it. At least the numbers Spooks are rather back be the again. Molly. But Jack's on. Yeah, this is the problem. Nestrada spotted out, but still applying pressure. And elsewhere, Hunter. Down for G2, it's starting to just crumble away again. This is a buy round for G2, and they're just not competitive in it. They've had one kill from Odyssey towards window, and that's about it. G2 have to consider the save again as Furia now reached nine rounds on the board. We're certainly feeling Art's impact this time around. It was quiet for the majority of Vertigo. We can see now 12 and 4. Having a great time. Yuri as well. He was the danger man when you look back at the performances they had throughout the groups. And Serato and Yuri at the top with 27 kills apiece versus the Cloud 9 side. Jackson, 
think he can to hold on to the rifle, but there's just too many players coming for him. And Jax is out of there. And Fury are fine committing that many weapons to him because they know how, how much it means to take every rifle away from them. Alexa B at least gets his into the next, but still not looking good here for G2. And feeling very rough about the fact that you know, you're looking at a situation where G2 finally buy up and they just, they're not even competitive in it. But you see, like, even here, both players are fully flashed. And sure, it's a bit of a lucky kill, but, you know, they're so far away from each other. Uh, Nico would probably end up dying one for one there, which is, again, not a good trade. You know, you understand the focus. So you you want to do something, like, you, you want to be aggressive, but you have to do it more as a team, I feel like. Full rifles, no AWP this time for Monacy. I've got utility, though. Well, the majority of players, Nico suffering, Jax as well. This is more like it, right? You can see the flash play, four guys speaking. If they did this the last round, they would have probably won, right? This time, Furia is one step ahead. Probably They're anticipating the adaptation from exactly, G2. Exactly, right? But, you know, you, you don't have that many rounds to make those sort of missed calls and mistakes and so on. That's why being patient is important. Like, and when you want to do something like that, you do it together as a team. And now they're in a bit of a better position, right? Better situation. Even if Furia hits the sides, but they're just faking in. They're going to walk out mid after these names. If the two smokes go down for stairs. Jungle and connector. Now the Furia squad starts to approach upon the A site via ramp, but it's middle. But the main pack is moving. 50 seconds left. Yuri's coming up con, and Monacy realizes once the smokes fade away, no one's here. No one's pressured us. We have to start worrying about the connector. And Monacy has Jax to help him out. He can focus on that one pick, but Drop gets both of those players, takes them down, and now Nico needs to make something happen to this flank. He's in behind him. Safe's inside of the connector, just rapidly trying to figure out where he's coming from, but Nico snaps him up. Now, like CB and Nico now need to recover the 2v2, the retake on the site. They've doubled up in towards ramp. And Yuri's sprinkling some damage to Alexi B. Nico's now joined up with his leader. Drop is rotated all the way, repositioning towards Palace. Taking a bit too long, Dinko. No smoke. Yeah. Drop can solve this round for Furia. Yeah, no smoke at all. That is a massive issue. Alexi B just goes straight to the defuse. Drop so now. Oh, it's not for him. Alexi B, he's just stuck the defuse. That's one way to win it. A third round for G2. Found off the back of the defuse. That was a mistake by Furia, right? That they didn't peak at the same time, or after they got the first kill, the time was running low, so they had a chance right there. That's a lucky one for G2 to grab. And my BR in the arena. We have yeah, supporting their friends. Good to see. Well, timeout. Needed the side of G2, right. they realize that's a round that... Yeah, Yuri probably didn't want, you know, in case they were just tapping, it didn't want to die, but the time was so low that if the guy is not on it and and kills him, they're probably, the bomb is going to explode anyway. So a bit of a misplay there, but still a big lead for Furia. You know, it won't really matter much if they end up winning this round now. And G2, they need, they need every single round until the end to have even a fighting chance. I mean, even, you know, 9-6 down as, as CT, that's going to be a really uphill struggle for them in the second half, no matter the score line towards the end of the first. Furia still with a very strong economy. They have everything they need for this round. Utility starts to go in towards B for Fury early on. He's taking their time at the start of these. Spread out across the map. Hunter deep smoking towards apartments. Likes to be can decide whether or not he wants to play with that and take some apartments control, but the time being, it has been a slight readjustment from G2. They've moved forward towards the A side, stacking it with four. And also, apart from that initial gun rounds, you know, Furia has slowed it down significantly, right? Like it's these slow defaults, going out around one minute, one minute, ten seconds, taking mid control, right? Being patient. So you can see a lot of cat and mouse. They're taking mid. G2's taking ram. They have two players here in window. It's all about timings here, right? Speaking of and time, kills. we're now at the 52nd mark, and Art finally draws blood in the round. Quickly answered back by Alexi B. Honestly, cancelled out very early on again. Jax is going behind them. I'm not sure he's going to be there on time. 
Hunter making steps the fade away. Yuri catches him. Nico instantaneously trades that onto Keserato. So now MCP under pressure. Drop just swings, rips him apart. And what a performance he's having here on the stage. Drop is having a great mirage. Jax is starting to make his play from short. Spot safe cross towards the van, but can't really do much about that. Switches out to the AK instead of the FAMAS. Better for this range. Just not really getting the opportunity there. Jax is backing away. No kit in the backs of G2 here. They want to at least have something to work with. They're going to bring the M4 and the AK away. And Furia now reach 10. G2 just being outmaneuvered yet again. You know, they, they're having the reactions, but they're not buying enough time, basically, for their reactions to bear fruit. Could see Jax, if he, had, he just had two or three more seconds, he would have had two guys in the back. But, you know, the fact that they just had one guy alive in the previous round, the lack of utility, they don't have anything to block them with, I'm sure, to buy that extra time. And the players just aren't, you know, individually performing well enough where they stay alive for a little bit longer. You know, Alexi, if he got at least one kill there, could have been a different story. And Yuri with another great lurk now from window catching Hunter completely unaware. Yeah, Yuri top fragging right now on the server, 15 and 6. Art close behind him on 13. And 100 ADR for Art as well. You can see the difference, like how easier it is for Furia to play the T side when Art is getting some of these entry kills, or not even getting the kill, just creating the space. Well, last round you said G2 needed everything left. Unfortunately, weren't able to capitalize upon the last round, but five almost feels like a necessity. This is not the start you would hope for. Keserato bounding towards the A site. Removes the defense straight away. Monty replies to the smoke. Continues to try and rattle a few. Monty, a couple of these players with Fury happily taking control of the site. Hard already in deep in CT as well. Monty trying his best to do something about the default plan, but you feel helpless at this point because Art has pushed all the way through and taken up a strong position. Alexi B does not consider it, loses his life, and now G2 into, well, it's all crumbling. Drop just takes him down. That is beautiful from Drop. The lineup just continuing to have this impressive performance in the quarterfinal. Just utter dominance from Fury on Mirage, really. You know, they just like G2 was one step ahead of them on that vertical CT side, for example. Here, Fury is three steps ahead of G2 every every T side round. It feels like, and the way they've won the rounds and the timing of the rounds they've won, G2 has struggled a lot with their economy. I mean, it's crazy to think like out of the 15 rounds, you maybe had three really good gun rounds for yourself, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Oh, the dink, but no kill. Nico, very lucky to be alive. Even luckier to find the kill. Yuri gone, but look how quick Art is getting into position yet again. He's up through the connector, and Hunter has no idea. Absolutely none. Art is just a real threat right now. Keserato feels emboldened by his teammate's position, so he moves his way up the ramp to help him. Fury have got the picks now going their way. Drop up short, catches Alexi B. Monis is still in jungle, but he needs a multi kill here. He catches safe in the open with a bomb. So that, that's down, it creates a bit of a problem perhaps here for Furia. There is still time, but Monacy making sure that Keserato's time in this round is cut short. He's gonna slip his way in towards jungle. Nico coming out from top mid. If there's two players you want in this position. 4G2, you've got him. Nico just comes through. The connector is gone, so it has to be Monacy! Down to 1v1! Monacy's done absolutely everything! Just drop, and he's done it! Monacy, they say lightning doesn't strike twice! Well, he struck a few times. 11-4, another round secured for G2. We go conclusion of this quarterfinal.
Hey future pros, I wanted to show you an alternate way to take some mid control on Mirage. To get the most out of this, you'll need four future pros, two smokes, two flashes, a molly and a hechi. Future pro number one, you'll be throwing the top mid smoke. To throw the smoke, stand beside the stairs. Aim at the wire above the corner of the building. Then just throw the smoke. Future pro number two, you will throw the smoke that lands on the mid ramp. Stand at the opposite end of the stairs as future pro one. Place the tip of your smoke over this dark smudge. Then just throw the smoke. A note for this, you will need the classic view model to line this one up. Future pro number three, you'll be throwing a couple of supporting flashes. To throw your first, run towards this wooden beam. While against the beam, aim just to the right of the bottom of this line. Running jump throw the flash to blind anyone who could have a good spawn. Then toss your second flash into the ramp smoke. Future pro number four, you will actually get to utilize this nifty ramp smoke, but first bank a molly off this wall, which will land behind the ramp smoke. Also toss a HE into mid if you want. Now you get to sit behind the smoke and look for some fights. Listen out for some burn damage as a CT will think their best option might be to play behind the smoke. From the CT perspective, you can see it will be very difficult to spot a T over the smoke. So good luck. Second, you're on Mirage. It's got to feel good if you're Fury right now. A little bit of life injected into the G2 side just towards the end there from Honesty, but it's yeah, still a long road back into this. They don't need life, Dinko. They need a pistol round. See, that would be nice. Yeah, it feels like for they, G2. It feels like they, they just lost five out of five so far. Every time Fury converted as well, goes without saying, without a pistol round. A comeback is just a pipe dream, Dinko. Well, we and we don't deal with those around here. We see the straight facts. <laughs> we'll see if G2 can pick it up. It's almost felt impossible for them to get the first round of play at the start of these halves. They have something prepared for us here. Utility going out towards the A site. So all Serato's alone there, so they should be able to get the bomb down at the very least. Well, he's got to peek out from spawn. Jack's taken down. Yeah, Serato deploys the smoke out in front of him. He's a couple more extending out of Palace, but G2 have lost that first player. They missed the smoke as well. Oh, yeah, and you can play forward with that. You can get in the mix of it. Hunters goes through, but he just can't find anybody, so he has to realize where is he gone? And inside of the smoke is Cancerado. Luckily, Alexi B fighting back, but G2 is still at the 2v4 of 1 HP. Alexi B continues to move forward, and he is cutting through them. Drops coming in from Palace, though. What a position. There's no way. Absolutely no way they expect this. And Monacy now gets alerted to that. He'll play from under the wood. A strong position for Monacy, but they consider it now and they find him. G2 will not win a single pistol in this series. That's a problem, Ninko. You need pistols. <laughs> absolutely but other than is that, a you know, the G2 just seems like really deflated, right? I mean, also missing that smoke, it went into jungle, it was supposed to be for bench, so that you could safely plant the bomb, take control of CT, right? Serato, first I thought, you know, why would you, you have a smoke in a kit, you want to save it and use it for the defuse. He used it to play around it, got two kills. G2 has to force here, really. Like, they, they need some early rounds if, if they're going to have even a slightest chance of making this comeback. But Fury is just really, really on point now. It doesn't look like they're going to give them any space. Well, Jax runs through. Continuing to charge up. Jax moves Art out of the round. Yuri back into it. G2 
doing some magic here. They need someone to step up. Zippy could be that player with the AK, but he gets caught. Unfortunately, can't find himself an opportunity. It's looking good for Fury at the post 13. As G2 are in the deficit. And they come back through T-spawn. Look who's waiting for them. Be Yuri. Monacy, luckily, not going that way with the bomb on his back. Yeah, Alexis seeing he could beat the Molotov, but didn't really expect an extra player in CT. Missed his chance. Hunter, though, evens it up 3v3 now. Yeah, catching. Still a chance for G2 here. Definitely a chance after that pick. Join the numbers back. Safe place from short. Looks in the connector, but Hunter rips safe apart. So suddenly, from the deficit to the advantage, G2 feeling good about this. 45 seconds. Nico begins to charge to B. And he's going to shortly find out that no one's here. No one's occupying this B defense right now. And that bomb will make its way over that with absolutely no problems. And for Furia, might just consider the save here. The patient has, patience has paid off in that 3v4, really, for, for G2, finding the extra kill. They're being careful here. They, they, they don't know if Drop maybe ha has pushed B, that he's deep in ass, but he's decided to go towards A. And yeah, it's going to be an easy save call, I feel like, for Furia. Yeah, well, you stack this off, if you come your way, then fantastic. If not, carry the weapons on over, but man, that's around for G2. You know, and you're watching this and you're saying, yeah, G2 can do this, you know. They were up 11-4 on Vertigo and, and Furia managed to do the comeback, yes, but that was on the CT side. Coming back on the T side is way more difficult because Furia knows exactly how many rounds they need to get to 16, right? So they can just play the percentages way more, take more risks, and for G2 it's going to mean a lot more rounds where you have to start it all over again, right? Like you're going to get an entry kill in one round or two openings and finish the round and you can't count on that every single time. You, you, it's going to be very difficult to get the correct read, you know, where to go after you establish some map control as well. Difficult but not impossible. Of course, so, well, nothing is impossible. There we go, then we'll keep, uh, we'll keep a chance here. If you've got Actually, family on your side. <laughs> <laughs> something is impossible, Yanko, and that's G2 winning pistol rounds, but... Uh, at least for this series, it does feel like it. Well, Furia have got themselves a scout in the hands of Safe, and MP9 is going to be coming out for Art. It's not the prettiest buy here for Furia by any I mean, means. Even if I was Furia here, I wouldn't force up until, you know, to spend all my money. I would leave 500 in the bank, so the next gun round is better. But we have a double underpass push here early on. Not all the way really yet. Just waiting to see whether the default comes in. Hunter's waiting for it. Control established for G2. Popcorn smoke put in place. Coming out from drop from the underpass is good for a pick on Alexi B, but Hunter's been quick at these trades. Quick at getting that kill back. And not only that, but he wants more, but the distraction was set up through the underpass to allow Ken Serrano the window of opportunity. But now the commitment to force it towards Bill and Connector has allowed for G2 to try and make their way out through the ramp. Putting pressure on safe. Looking to apply themselves towards this A site. Estrada with an AK, now in hand, has taken out Jax. The guillotine is well and truly rolled out. G2 players have just been executed. Nico needs to get back into it, but his teammate's now gone. It's just Nico and low HP. And if it wasn't difficult enough already, that round just makes it a mountain to climb. Yeah, that feels like the dagger really straight into G2's heart. After that early trade, I mean, you have to be more decisive. Like, at that point, you just need to go out A. Okay. And save does a great job with the defensive smoke again. Like, just dropping that smoke in the middle there. There's so many plays he can make around, and you have to respect it a little bit. You can see the rotation is coming in immediately. And G2 is trying to play everything by the book, you know, wanting to flash for, you know, connector or bench and then peek. But by the time they organize all of that and try to do it, Fury is ready for it, and now even, I mean, the feeling of having to eco being down 13-5. That must suck, Dinko. Yeah, really sucks. G2 should just be getting torn through right now, and having to concede a 14, you know you're going to be in that position, and with how Fury have played, it feels like they should be rolling into two more. Oh, it's going to have no problem at dealing with a couple. But just there's no one else on B. How? Why? Fury? 
perhaps confident in the commitment from Art so deep into the apartment. Yeah, they're just running in, they don't care. <laughs> I guess the rotation is pretty quick. Yeah, very fast. They don't even allow G2. When you go full W. Yeah, full W going out in force. No ball plan, even secured, wasn't even allowed, so no mercy. Furia on 14 rounds, so two away now from a semi-final spot here in Dallas. And you can just see, right, why we always say CS is a mental game as well, right? Not just about the X's and O's, it, it, it's because you can see the difference. The Furia from the first map or the first half of Vertigo and this end. It's like the both teams just swapped roles, right? In, in a sense. Now it's G2 is the one who's looking a little bit lost. Fury are the one who's winning rounds fairly easily, right? They're not even being that competitive. And it must have, something must have happened to G2, you know, on that T side of Vertigo. Some miscommunication, disagreements or something like that, because they were not able to recover from that Vertigo loss at all. Well, revenge from Major. Not looking like he's going to be coming through any time soon to G2. Yeah, and all the people who thought, yeah, they should have gone for Mirage, you know, Ancient was a mistake. Well, here we are. This doesn't really prove our point, does it? Just shows Furia's map pool. Difficult for G2 to combat. Well, look, Furia is already way more dynamic. Like, they have B-Apps control, 4 on A. They're getting another great 3. Like, this is going to be another slaughter Dinko soon. Yuri is the first player to deal with that. I like CB, it's the one for one. It's the Hunter, but Drop is tracking him, sees the battle, sees the tip, and takes him out of the play, and Drop, so quick to think about the palace push. It's all crumbling here for G2. Monacy will try his best, but it's not gonna be enough. 15 to five, Furia on map and series point are one round away from the semi-finals here in Dallas. It certainly looks like a Dinkwan. We've been saying it for a while, right? Furia, they always make the playoffs. They've improved a lot. They're playing much better. Their map pool seems to have improved as well, to have widened. And finally, they're looking to take that win in the playoffs. Book themselves a meeting tomorrow versus Enz, who's waiting in the wings. And we see Art wants to close out the game with a statement here. Push forward. Hunter ripped apart at the beginning of this one. Once G2's call, it's the B site. They attempt, it might just be their final move here in Dallas. Fury blinded, Nico blinder was shot himself out of the deep, but the rest are falling. It is just Monacy. And for Fury, it's going to be semi-finals. They lock it in versus G2. They say revenge is a dish best served cold, but unfortunately for G2, we're in Texas. Absolutely, you can see how much it means to them, right? They've been on this stage a couple of times recently, couldn't get that win, and now a hard fought.